I'm David Simmons, author of the article on Cleveland's Guardians, and I'm interested in telling you a little bit more about this unique structure. I'm Bill Eichenberger, and I'm the editor of the Ohio History Connections membership publication, Echoes Magazine. What interests me about the story is the Lorraine Carnegie Bridge uh, is really emblematic of Cleveland in the 20th century. The highs of the 1920s and 30s, the lows of the 1970s and 80s, and now uh, in a new century, uh, the, the Guardians sort of watch over the city. Public art is something that people uh, have strong feelings about, but in this case, these are such monumental additions uh, that they're like nothing else in the state. They're so unique that they really need to be preserved, and that's what makes them special to me. Henry Ford was the one that came up with the idea of everyone owning an automobile, and Cleveland got a factory for Ford in 1914. So as a result, Cleveland's streets were full of automobiles. The whole history of the automobile in this country is the roads desperately trying to catch up to the automobile. <laughs> the Lorraine Carnegie Bridge was all about getting traffic over the flats. The flats is a warehouse and industrial area right in the middle of the city. Throughout the 1920s, Cleveland was so committed to the future and progress that they decided that they wanted to build this Lorraine Carnegie Bridge. The bridge was a collaboration between an engineer and an architect. Wilbur Watson was the engineer, and he was very interested in bridge architecture and hired Frank Walker to help him design and make the Lorraine Carnegie Bridge appealing and attractive by adding these guardians that were holding different modes of transportation in their hands. In the 1970s, we saw the beginning of uh, the decline of the steel industry in northeastern Ohio. Uh, at the same time, we were seeing the deterioration of the Lorraine Carnegie Bridge. De-icing was one of the main factors. These Ohio winters were just brutal. They actually had to close the sidewalks, close two of the outside lanes, and uh, all the while the air pollution was darkening the guardians themselves to the point that they looked shabby and, and worn out. The bridge survived the 1970s, and by the early 1980s, the city uh, was going to rehabilitate it. Through the historic preservation processing, they were saved, but they also agreed to clean all the years of grime and dirt off the, off the pylons. The soot had turned these Art Deco pylons from more of a beige color to, to, to black. The technicians that were doing that agreed to leave one bit of darkened stone and that was the the coal in the in the bed of the coal truck they thought this should stay black just because that's more realistic when i first heard that the indians were changing their name to the guardians i was indifferent about the name uh, at best and then i read an article that quoted paul dolan the indians owner saying that he rode his bicycle from his office at Progressive Field across the bridge every day. And he said that even though the name came without consideration of the Guardians, that it makes perfect sense for the city. Now the only question is whether or not the Guardians can help the team protect an eighth or ninth inning lead. <laughs> <laughs>